It's Wednesday and I feel like I've been hit by a bus. I don't know what's going on with my neck, but it's been hurting for about two weeks because I remember going over to my parents' house on Friday and it was hurting so bad that I felt like I was gonna cry. And I haven't been to the chiropractor since because they're only open four days a week and one of those days is only till noon. So, I'm going to call them this morning as soon as they open. I think they open at 8 and try to get an appointment for this afternoon. And then Paisley and I are going to try to leave school, go by the chiropractor, and then get home in time to have some time to just chill and not have to rush and go to bed. Because last night, on gymnastics nights, um, she has to rush to get to bed because we have to get up so early. Her bedtime's 7.30. <clears throat> But I said all of that to say that I did not sleep good last night because my neck has been killing me. My neck hurts and it makes my head hurt and it makes my jaw hurt because I have TMJ in my jaw and it's just a big old mess. So hopefully the chiropractor can fix me up. But I am going to lay out morning work. I haven't done that yet. I don't know why I didn't do that yesterday. Um, I guess I just ran out of time. So I'm gonna do that and get the morning routine board up. I need to see what the lunch choices are today because today was originally supposed to be a teacher work day, but because we had snow days, um, we had to make them up today. So I'm gonna do those things and get ready for the day and I'll check back in with y'all later. Hello, Miss Edwards. Hi. Are you doing your homework? This, I've told you guys this before, this is my mailboxes for my students. They each have their own, and anytime they don't finish their work, I tell them to put their unfinished work in their mailboxes. Look how many mailboxes have work. More of them have work than not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have them work on their mailbox work for morning work and the students who are finished with all of their mailbox work, I'm gonna let them pick a puzzle to work on this morning. I got these at Dollar Tree and so hopefully that will motivate the others to get their work done so they can do a puzzle because all this mailbox work, sitting in their mailboxes for days, is silly because they aren't motivated to do it, but hopefully this will motivate them. It's dark in my room. I had the lights off and I just left them off when I came back, but um, my kids are at lunch, so I thought I would catch you guys up on how my day has been. I am still testing. I had, actually I had one little girl that had not started and she is on her third book, so that is good. She's going up. And then the other little girl, I just had to ask her uh, her oral questions, and that was all I had to do with her. So I am waiting on the other girl to get finished, and while she has been working, I had a small group back at my table, which feels really great because I haven't been able to have a small group for a while now. And I gave them a passage to read, and we're working on some writing comprehension and dictating where they tell me what they're gonna write make sure it makes sense and then write it because I have so many kids who struggle with writing comprehension they write something down and it either doesn't answer the question or it doesn't make sense and so that's something that I feel like 
my kids need to work on. So I started that today and it's been a pretty good morning. We started our Scholastic News. We're doing Prey on the Ice and my kids seem really interested in it. This is what it looks like. And we just went over the vocabulary. They watched a little video from the Arctic. And, and then tomorrow they are going to read the article and work on their questions with the partner. So they're kind of excited about that because I don't typically do partners for Scholastic News, but I'm hoping that it will be a good thing and that they can work together and get it done at least because like I said before it takes them days to get finished unless I stay right on top of them I thought I would catch you guys up when they get back we're gonna read if you give a mouse a cookie and they are gonna write down the goods and services from that book and then they have art today and I have an IEP meeting at 11:45 when my kids are in art so I probably won't be able to touch base with you guys then unless my meeting ends before they get back, which it probably won't because they only have specials for 45 minutes and the IEPs usually last an hour. I will let you guys know how that goes. And I do have a meeting after school today for our, I think it's flex benefits or something. I wish I didn't have to go, but hopefully it won't be long. And then, oh, I need to call the chiropractor. I'm gonna do that now and then go eat a bite of lunch, and I'll see you guys later. Is that how many she had? Yes. And then Sally gave her eight more. Seven, eight, eight. subtract. And then now Now she has 18. So where's the 18? 11. Okay. Because you take the two away from the 20, this would be 20, but you take away that, then it's 18. So what's the answer? How many balloons did Kira have at the start? 10. 10. Yes. Can I do it by myself? Yes. Um, Okay, who wants to show me how you do this problem with cubes? I did. Okay, how about this? I'll read it and you model it. You ready? Kira had a bunch of balloons. Well, we need to, we know she had 18 at the end. How many cubes do you have? Okay, so we need to get rid of some so we have 18. You should be modeling this situation at your table groups, not making swords. So that's the bunch she had. Sally gave her eight more. Now Kira has 18. How many did Kira have at the start? Five, 10, 14, 18. At the start she had 18? She had 10 at the start. Okay, so 10 at the start. That's our answer, right? And these are the eight that Sally gave her. Yes. Good. Okay, here we go. You ready? Kira had a bunch of balloons. Point to the bunch. Can you lay it down so I can see it? Okay. Point to the bunch. Sally gave her eight more balloons. Now Kira has 18. How many balloons did Kira have at the start? How many? How many is that? Did you get 10? Did you get 10? Good. All of my kids are gone home and I am back in the room. I had to go talk to someone and ask someone else a question and stop by second load and speak to one of my students. So I'm just now getting back in the room. It is 2.44. Um, I had a little boy on the playground this afternoon kick someone because he said the other boy took the ball from him. So I had to have a conversation about how we don't kick people no matter what they do and that he hurt him for taking a ball. So we have these like reflection sheets that kids fill out whenever they misbehave 
and so on there it says to put his name and date and then it says what happened so he has to write what happened and then he has to write what he can do better next time and then I send it home and his mom has to sign it so he put on there do not kick or no he put on there that he kicked someone for what happened and then for what to do better next time he put don't get mad and so then I had to have a conversation about how it's okay to get mad because everybody gets mad. I get mad, you get mad, people get mad. But it's how you respond to your anger that's important. So I erased, don't get mad, and I asked him to fix it. He didn't, he just sat there. So then he went to second load, which they meet in the cafeteria and one of the assistants reads a book to him. And then at five minutes till three, they go into the auditorium and then their bus is back by then. But I went in there and he still hadn't written anything down. So I sat down beside him and I said, do you want to tell me what you can do better next time and I will write it down? And he said, yes. So he said, tell the teacher and don't kick. I said, perfect. So I wrote, tell the teacher and don't kick and told him that he needed to have mom sign it and bring it back tomorrow. He seemed pretty upset about it, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it works and that he won't kick again. So then I had to go speak to a teacher on my team about some um, word work words for my kids because she's prepared some and I asked her if she would send me a copy of that. And then I had a student bring in two $5 bills this morning in his homework folder and he didn't know what they were for. He said they were for books but I don't know what books. He didn't have a book order. So I asked him it was if it was for the books in the library and he didn't know. So I went down there and asked the librarian if maybe he'd lost a book and owed her money and he didn't. So I don't know what the money's for. I'm gonna send a message to his mom and see what the money is for. And then hopefully that will help me figure out the solution to this problem I'm having. So I wanted to catch you guys up on what we did for math this afternoon. We are talking about problems that have an unknown start. And being able to figure out the operation and be able to solve it, they had several math tools to use. I gave them cubes, I gave them base 10 blocks, I gave them hundreds of boards, and it's, it's just a hard concept to grasp whenever there's a number that you don't know and you have to take some away from it and then you have a number left. So I was trying to explain that you put the two together. You give him back what he gave away and see how many he had to start. But anyways, I have a meeting at 3 o'clock, so I'm going to jump off here. My battery is about to die. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I hope that you will click on the thumbs up button down below to let me know that you like this video, if you liked it. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos from me in the future. And I will see you guys tomorrow.